So as I say, let's look at how the army is deployed. So in Lost Battles, uh, movement is ordered by means of command points. So the Roman army has a command or a fighting value of 73, which uh, translates into seven command points. So for every 10 points of fighting value, you get one command point. Plus, you get a dice roll, which is added to that, and you also get the benefits of any commanders. So Sempronius is an uninspired commander, so he'll add one combat exemption and one, uh, sorry, one combat bonus and one command exemption, which can be used for movement. Um, so because the trivia takes place in wet weather, uh, we get the dice roll for commands halved. So usually in Lost Battles, we start off with an average dice roll for the first turn, for the deployment turn, so that no side is getting unduly disadvantaged. So we've got a commander roll of four, or three halved to two. So that gives us a total of ten commands here, which incidentally is one more than the book deployment uses, but uh, we're going to use ten. So let's look at how they did that. So the light infantry comes on through the rear zone here. They get to move two zones forward, and that costs one point. They get to move two zones forward because there's a special rule for light infantry where they get to double move on the first turn uh, freely. Normally a double move costs two points for an individual unit or one for a veteran, but in this case it only costs one point to move them forward. Now it usually costs two points to move a group in Lost Battles, so uh, let's look over here. We've got a group of two units. This is the heavy cavalry on the right, so they've entered. We've come through the right rear zone, and cavalry have a special rule where they can arrive facing left or right and it doesn't cost them an extra move to do that so they come on there that's one move and they can move into that zone which is their second move because cavalry get uh, two moves every turn as opposed to infantry which only get one uh, so that's two command points three command points used leaving seven now we've got another unit of cavalry here so these chaps have actually double moved that's the extra way extra command uh, that wasn't included in the lost battles deployment has been brought in so they've come on here again facing this way for one move two moves to move in here and then they've about faced to give them three moves so they do have an extra move which means they could move there but they don't want to get too close to the formidable enemy cavalry as you'll see a little bit later on so that's two points for a double move for those guys, so that's five command points used altogether. Okay, again, two points to bring on a group. So here we've got a group of one, two, three average legionary units and one veteran legionary unit. Here, this is Sempronius' zone. So Sempronius, as I said, he's an uninspired commander, so he gets to use uh, to confer one activation exemption. So it only costs one army command plus his one to bring this group on. So again, this time we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven veteran legionaries in this zone. So this is definitely the strongest zone from the Roman perspective. Over here, again, two more commands to bring these guys on. Three more average legionary units plus the Kinemani allies, you know, 3,000 troops there. So altogether, that cost 10 commands. And we've got an army of 36,000 infantry plus 3,000 kilometers, so 39,000 infantry and 4,500 cavalry. Okay, so let's look at Hannibal's deployment. Okay, so Hannibal's army has a fighting value of 83, which gives 8 command points, plus we've got Mago as an average leader. He gives 2 command exemptions, and we've got the mighty Hannibal there, who's a brilliant commander and gives four exemptions. Uh, and of course the dice roll, if you remember, because of the wet weather, is halved to two. So that means that, in effect, they've got 16 command points to play with, which is significantly more than the Romans. So, first up, we've done the same infantry trick. This time, light infantry have come on through here to here for one command. Same again in the centre. So that's two commands used. Then, We've done the cavalry next. Over here, sorry, over here, uh, we've got 
average light cavalry. Now, light cavalry have a special advantage, they can get to do free, two free facing changes per turn. So they actually move two, but they get to fa change facing twice for free. So they've come on, one, two, free facing change, three. So they've been given a double move, which cost two command points. So that's four command points used altogether. Over on the other flank, these Numidians have done the same thing, so that's six command points used. Here, we've got a group of three units of heavy cavalry. They've come on as a group, so two commands to activate a group, of course. So they've come on facing this way and moved one to there. Now, just to explain why these chaps are on an angle, I just think it looks better uh, than having them facing that flank, even though that's where they should be facing. And I've done the same thing with the Romans over there. So that's two, four, six, eight commands used. Then back over to this side, we've got another group here comprising the two veteran light cavalry units and two average heavy cavalry units. The group is uh, activated by Mago and his two command exemptions. So that's effectively free in terms of army commands. So we've still got Hannibal plus two commands from the army uh, reservoir. So we've got two units coming on here, so they count as a group, so that's two command points, so that's the ten command points of the army used. Then using Hannibal's four exemptions we bring on three units of heavy infantry in the centre and two units of heavy infantry and the elephants on the left. Now just a note about the elephants, if elephants are in the lead they only count as one towards the attack limit. But if they're attacking from behind the other troops, they count as two towards the attack limit. And the same thing goes with light infantry. If they're in the lead, they only count as one towards the attack limit. If they're not, they count as two. And light infantry also have another important feature, which is that if they're accompanied by heavy infantry, fresh heavy infantry, uh, they can ignore a double hit, which can be quite useful. Uh, first up. A double hit of course is when you score four more than needed to score a single hit. Uh, but we'll get to that during the actual combat phase. So, recapping Hannibal's army, we've got 20,000 heavy infantry here, we've got 8,000 light infantry, and we've got 4,500 light cavalry, and 7,500 heavy cavalry, so it's a pretty formidable force. And if we look, take a look overall, please excuse the mess in the background there, I'll try and move around so that it <laughs> looks a little bit better. If you look at the entire table here, you can see that the Romans have a significant advantage in infantry and the Carthaginians in cavalry. So historically, the Romans advanced in the center and uh, the Carthaginians one on the flanks, and Mago's ambush hit the Romans from the rear. And then over over time, the Romans began to break, except for in the centre where 10,000 of them broke through um, the Celtic troops there. So probably this battle will go along broadly similar lines, but from Handel's perspective, there we hope that the Romans don't actually break through and escape. So one other thing... As I said before, the Romans are fatigued, which has the material effect of when a Roman unit has taken a hit and becomes spent, uh, from that point on, they are attacking at a minus one. So attrition for the Romans uh, becomes very uh, nasty over time, not only in terms of um, weakening the army, but also weakening their attack abilities. Okay, so uh, let's start off with turn one.